Reheating asphalt is a critical component in the installation of stamped asphalt products offered by Integrated Paving Concepts. Reheating enables a higher level of quality when stamping asphalt as it removes the high stress, high volume paving process from the equation. Using a reheat machine reduces the stress and increases the quality as it allows more time for project layout, increases asphalt quality, and eliminates the need for large, untrained crews. It simply allows the installer to focus on the stamping of the asphalt rather than trying to keep up with a paving machine. The SR reheat equipment has been specifically designed to meet all the needs for stamping asphalt. It is very easy to move and productive. While other conventional box heaters that have been designed for patching can easily overheat the asphalt surface, the SR heaters have infrared heater banks that reciprocate back and forth, allowing the asphalt surface to cool as the mat absorbs the heat with each pass. This reciprocating function also allows the operator to physically monitor surface temperatures. Through the reciprocating heating process and by monitoring surface temperatures, the SR equipment minimizes overheating of the asphalt surface. These features reduce problems that come from overheating such as weakening the surface that the coatings and thermoplastics rely on for adhesion. Burning the surface burns the asphalt cement that bind the aggregates. This can create issues which can be misinterpreted as adhesion failures. Instead, in these situations, the weakened surface layer separates from itself and the asphalt becomes the mode of failure. It may appear that the coatings or the thermoplastics didn't adhere, but in looking closely at the bottom side, they have asphalt still stuck to them. The coating and or thermoplastic adhesion may be good and the product could be performing as expected, but the weakened asphalt surface is the failure. Using the SR equipment greatly reduces the risk, but it is still possible to overheat the surface which is why we monitor the surface. Asphalt is slightly different wherever you go, but in general, it starts to burn around 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. The flash point, or the point where the surface is scorched, is around 430 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. It is usually very obvious when you're burning the oils out of the asphalt as smoke can be seen coming off the surface. A general rule of thumb, the more smoke, the more damage. With that said, 320F or 160C should always be in our mind as the high range when monitoring the surface temperatures. The general concept of reheating asphalt is fairly simple. We are trying to soften the asphalt so it accepts the template. Asphalt needs to be softened approximately 3 quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters in depth. As mentioned, the reciprocating heat gently heats the asphalt. The surface is allowed to cool and absorb, limiting the chances of burning. To guarantee that we don't overheat, we need to monitor the surface temperature using an infrared thermometer. This will educate the installer on surface temperatures to ensure the surface doesn't burn, and can also give a good idea when we have proper softening depth. By monitoring the surface temperature, it can tell you a lot about heat depth. Take this heating profile for example. Temperatures were measured before and after each heater pass. You will see the surface temperature spike after the heater passes and drop before the heaters return over the monitored area. The drop in temperature shows how much heat is being lost from the surface. This heat loss can give a good indication on the amount of heat depth. The less heat loss, the more depth you have as the asphalt is holding the heat. In general, if you hit 320F or 160C after the heater passes and the asphalt holds 240F or 115C, it is usually a good indication the asphalt is softened appropriately. That said, to ensure that depth has been achieved, Use a probe, such as a screwdriver, to do a physical check. Again, 
The whole point of reheating is to soften the asphalt without burning the surface so it can gently accept the intended template. Properly heated asphalt will accept templates slowly and gently and will minimize stress on the template, the plate compactor, and the asphalt. When asphalt is heated too much, there is a risk of getting on it too soon and having the template cut through the asphalt with no resistance, which leads to sharp, unstable grout lines. On the other hand, when asphalt isn't heated or softened enough, it will resist the template that is being stamped and put extra pressure and force on the plate compactor, the template, and the asphalt, and it will possibly reduce the lifespan of all three. The process of proper heating is a bit of a balancing act as the heated asphalt starts cooling immediately when the SR heaters are stopped or removed. The amount of heat and time required to properly heat or soften the asphalt is dependent on a number of variables. These variables include working time, climatic conditions, plate compactor size, mix design, template density, and age of asphalt. Working time refers to how long it takes to place and stamp the template. If there isn't priority on placing the template and stamping immediately, you will gradually lose heat and further extend the amount of time needed. How fast until you can start stamping and the size of the area to be stamped are both relevant to your working time. If the crew is not prepared, has a difficult time placing the template, or is using a larger heater, it will take longer to stamp. This all affects how much heat needs to be placed into the asphalt. So, your working time, or the amount of time it takes to finish stamping, will play a role in the amount of heat necessary. The always changing variable in how long it takes to heat is climate. It will take less time to reheat asphalt when ambient temperatures are hot than when they are cold. Asphalt heats quicker and holds heat longer when it is hot, meaning you will have shorter heating times and longer working times. When cold, the heat tends to dissipate quicker, so heating will take longer and working time will be reduced. Again, this lack of working time will affect how much heat needs to be placed in the asphalt. The more heat depth, the longer the working time. The size of plate compactor is another variable in how much heat depth will be necessary. The lighter the stamping force, the softer the asphalt has to be to accept that template. The larger plate compactors will require less depth, but still need quite a bit of heat in the asphalt to soften appropriately to accept the template. The next variable that affects heating is the asphalt mix design. Sandy mix designs that have less aggregates, like those used for pedestrian type applications, tend to heat quicker than those that have a larger size and quantity of aggregate, like those usually used for trafficked applications. The reason is that larger aggregates tend to lose heat quicker, so more heat depth is required in these situations. As a warning, Mix designs are built for the intended use, so it is always important to never change the mix design so it heats quicker, as this can cause a number of performance related issues. The density of the template pattern you wish to stamp also plays a role in how long it takes to heat. Dense patterns that require more force to push the pattern into the asphalt will need to be stamped into a softer surface, while low density templates will be accepted into the asphalt with less force. Template density will play a factor in the time required to heat and soften the surface. Lastly, the age of the asphalt also plays a role in understanding how long it takes to heat, as asphalt tends to age harden with time. Asphalt cement, used to bind the aggregates, gets harder with age. As it age hardens, it tends to take longer for the heat to absorb. Generally, the older the asphalt, the longer it will take the heat to absorb. New asphalt tends to absorb more heat, which reduces the amount of time. Simply put, there are many factors that affect reheating. Improving your efficiency will reduce your working time, which will play a role in reducing your heating time. Climatic conditions, 
size of plate compactor, mixed design, template density, and asphalt age all play a role in how long it takes to heat. Some of these variables are changing day to day and job to job, so expect your heating times to differ with these changes. The best way to reduce your heating times and become efficient is to try and always keep your heater moving. If your reheater can be heating while you are stamping, it will be twice as productive as having it sit idle. The key to stamping productivity is reheating productivity. Hopefully through this video you understand the benefits of reheating and the benefits of the SR equipment. You understand that burning the asphalt can result in product issues and that the general temperature to be aware of is around 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. Again, this number may vary, but if the asphalt is smoking, you are burning it. We covered the reheating concept of softening asphalt so it gently accepts the template, as well as how and why we monitor surface temperatures. These surface temperatures give us a full understanding of how hot the asphalt is getting and the depth of the heat. Properly heated asphalt will make stamping asphalt much easier and less destructive on the equipment, templates, and asphalt. We went over the factors that affect reheating, things like your working time, climatic conditions, size of the plate compactor, mix design, template density, and of course the age of the asphalt. As explained, conditions in asphalt are constantly changing, so heating times will also change. And of course, we discussed that in order to be productive, you need to always keep your heater moving. From here, it is simply a matter of getting comfortable using your reheat equipment.